Today's video is brought to you by webdesignernews.com, which is a constantly updating source of different articles and websites for web designers and design in general. And there are a ton of different things linked here for you to go in and check out. So no matter what your flair in design is, you'll probably find some really interesting news and articles here to check out. And you can also star different articles to go in and remember. So there's a my favorite section. So if at a later time you go in there, it'll save everything that you have favorited. So it's very easy to access articles that you've saved in the past. So once again, a huge thank you to Web Designer News for sponsoring this video, so be sure to thank them as well by checking them out. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to make a seamless repeating geometric pattern, much like the one you see right here on my screen. And of course, I'll show you a few different ways to make different options or different looking options as well. And there's a lot of flexibility in how this looks because this is made up of a bunch of different triangles, and then I just individually colored them to make this pattern. But the first thing you want to do is open up a file. So I'm going to go to File and then New to start a new file here. And I made mine 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. It doesn't really matter what size you make yours. The only thing to consider is if you want a square repeating pattern to make a square artboard size. But I'll give you a few different ways of achieving a seamless repeat no matter what the overall dimension of it is. So I'm going to hit OK here to make a new file. So this is my artboard. And the way we create this is by using triangles. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go over to our toolbar and there's a rectangle shape, which if you click and hold on the toolbar, it brings up a few different shape options. So we're going to select the polygon tool. And once the polygon tool is selected, you just want to click once somewhere on your artboard to bring up this dialog box. The size doesn't really matter, but we want to enter in three sides since this is a triangle. You could use different shapes as well. Well, like a hexagon for example if you want to do that but since my example was using all triangles I'm going to do this with three sides and then hit OK and under fill and stroke here as you can tell right now it has a white fill and a black stroke which is the default so we just want to make sure first of all that our triangle is still selected and to do that just hit V on your keyboard to bring up the selection tool it's the black arrow and also if you're wondering about what shortcuts I'm using I'll both say them in the video and then I'll list them out in the description as well for you to kind of keep note of and we actually want the triangle's top to be the flat part instead of the pointy part. So I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see this a little bit better. And with the triangle selected, I'm going to hover my mouse over this middle point right here. So it brings up the rotation tool. And then I'm going to hold shift and start rotating this around. And holding shift just keeps this moving on perfect 45 degree angles. So by holding shift and bringing it all the way down here, you can tell that it brings the flat line of the triangle up to the top here and the pointy end at the bottom. And I want to highlight over this again and make sure it's selected. And then in the fill, I'm just going to hit shift X, which will swap the fill and the stroke. So now we have a black fill and a white stroke. And then I'm going to click on the white stroke so that it is in the foreground right here. And the stroke is the one that has the square missing from the middle. And then just below the stroke to the right, there's a white box with a red arrow diagonally going through it that will say none when you hover over it. Click that to remove the stroke. And you can, of course, click on the fill and double click on the fill to make this particular triangle whatever color it is you want it to be. I'll just leave this black for now. So I'm going to zoom out quick. And you want to make sure smart guides are on for the next step and to turn on on smart guides on a PC it's control U and to turn them on on a Mac is command U and you'll know that they're on when you hover over a path like this right here you can see there's a little green text thing that says path as I hover over it or on a corner it'll say anchor as I hover over that and that includes if I'm not clicking on it. So right here, I'm hovering over the anchor point or the edge of this triangle. And as I move down the path, it'll turn that to path. And that's just going to be super useful for a few reasons moving forward here. So I'm going to highlight over this and then hold shift and grab this little bottom section, the lower right handle, and just hold shift and drag it a little bit bigger to make this triangle just a little bit bigger here. You can make these triangles whatever size you want. It really doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to click off so the triangle isn't selected. It wasn't for me, but it might be for you. So just click off your artboard to deselect it with the selection tool still selected, which is the black arrow or V on your keyboard. And I'm going to hover over the upper left hand corner of the triangle so that it says anchor. And if you're not seeing that anchor text, make sure you hit control U on a PC or command U on a Mac to turn on smart guides. So I'm going to click, hold and drag it and bring it up into the upper left hand corner of my artboard right here. And you'll see that it says intersect and then draws a green line horizontally as well as vertically, letting me know that I'm perfectly lined up on my artboard. And I'm just going to let go. So next, what I'm going to do is once again, go over to the anchor on the upper left hand corner of this triangle. And I'm going to hold down alt on a PC or option on a Mac, click and hold on this anchor and start dragging it to the right. And then I'm also going to hold shift 
while I'm dragging it to the right so that it stays on this perfect horizontal plane. And I want to just move these edges together until each edge is touching and it will say intersect. When it says intersect and it draws this green line vertically, it lets you know that you are perfectly touching the point of the triangle next to it. So at that point I can just let go. And as you can tell that went ahead and duplicated this triangle. So I'm going to zoom out by hitting control minus or command minus on a Mac. And I want to keep this triangle selected still with the direct selection tool. So if you clicked off, just click on this triangle again. And then on a PC, I'm going to hit Control D. And on a Mac, I'm going to hit Command D to go ahead and duplicate these again and again until we get these triangles overlapping the edge corner here. So we actually want to make sure that these triangles are starting and then ending perfectly on the artboard. And that's so that we can make this into a seamless repeat. So with the selection tool, which is the black arrow or V on your keyboard as a shortcut, highlight over everything. And I'm just going to zoom in by hitting Control plus on a PC or Command plus on a Mac. And I'm going to go over the bottom right hand handle right here. Holding Shift, I'm going to resize this to be a little bit smaller. So I'm actually going to bring it in a little bit past this artboard. And then I'm going to go over this again. And this time I'm going to make it match up perfectly with the artboard's edge. In this case, it'll say page as it is doing that. It might give you a slightly different message when you do it, but you just want to make sure it's letting you know that you're perfectly on the edge of this artboard. And holding shift, just make sure everything stays in proportion. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and let go. So I'm going to zoom out here so we can see that the triangles are perfectly covering the top edge of this artboard right here. And I just want to highlight over everything with the selection tool so that all these triangles are selected. And I'm going to hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, click and then drag down and then hold shift so that these are on the perfect vertical plane now. And with everything still highlighted, I'm going to go over this center point right here so that it brings up the rotation tool icon. And I'm going to hold down shift and kind of flip these around a perfect 180. And the next step here is I want to make these actually a slightly different color so I can differentiate them a little bit. So with all these still selected, I'm going to double click on the fill, change it to be something like a lighter gray so I can distinguish these. And then I'm just going to select one of these different top point anchors on the the tip of the different triangles, you can see I'm doing that with my mouse right now across a few of them. I'm going to click and hold on that and then bring it up right here until it says intersect. And I am both intersecting with the top of the page as well as the actual triangle right here. So you want to make sure that intersect line vertically lets you know that this is lining up perfectly. And then you can just go ahead and let go. And as you can see, these triangles went ahead and perfectly aligned with each other. And also, as you might notice, there is a triangle missing from covering this edge on the right side. So I'm going to click on this last triangle's anchor point right here. Actually, what I'm going to do is click on this triangle. Just hold Alt or Option on a Mac. Click and drag it to the right here while holding Shift until we get it to the intersect point on the artboard. So you can see it's drawing a vertical green line and it says intersect. And by holding Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, it duplicates. And by holding shift, it stays perfectly horizontal. So once it does this, I can go ahead and let go. So now we have the basis of this repeat going on right here. So now what I'm going to do actually is select everything we just made. So all the triangles are selected, both the black and the gray. And once again, I'm going to hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac. Start dragging down. Once I'm dragging down, I'm going to hold shift. So it's on this perfect vertical plane and then let go. And much like before, we want to go over the middle right here until our cursor turns into this rotate tool icon and then I'm gonna hold down shift and flip this around until it's a perfect 180. Alternatively you can right click on this go to transform and then reflect and from there you can reflect horizontally and it will do that step for you. But I'm just going to close that as I actually don't want to do anything there and with that selection tool still selected I'm going to go over the top part of the path right here on these new triangles we just made and as you can see it says path letting me know that I'm on it. I'm going to click and hold and start dragging up while holding shift until it says intersect with the smart guides so that way you know that these are perfectly lined up with each other. So this is the fundamental basis of the repeat right here so I'm going to actually do that basically same step again highlight over all these triangles but this time we don't have to rotate it. Go over the top edge so it says path so I know I'm on it and once I'm over this top path I'm going to hold down alt on a PC or option on a Mac so that this duplicates. Click and hold and start dragging this down and when I'm dragging it down I'm holding holding shift so it stays in this perfect vertical plane and I just want to make sure it matches up right here so it says intersect which means that these are perfectly touching each other and once I'm done I'll just let go and you want to keep this selected right here so that once again we can hit control D on a PC or command D on a Mac to duplicate this until in this case it perfectly fills up our artboard 
And as you can see at the bottom here, it actually extends past our artboard. So if you want to make this stay a perfect square, there's a few different ways you can do this. You can highlight everything and just grab this bottom point and then drag it up until it goes to the edge of the page right here. As you can see, my smart guide is pretty small, but it says page. So that makes sure everything fits perfectly inside our artboard. So when we create a seamless repeat later, it makes sure that it stays in this perfect square. Alternatively, we can just go to edit and then document setup and then edit artboards. And if you don't care that this isn't a perfect square, you can just drag down your artboard until it matches the intersect of our new triangular shape here at the bottom. And then once you're done and it looks good, just hit the escape button, which will apply that change to our artboard. So now our artboard perfectly matches the height of our pattern here. The only thing that will change is that this is no longer a square. So if you wanted a square repeat, I'd suggest kind of scrunching stuff together a little bit, and that will be the easiest way to make that happen. So now we're basically done with what I did previously. Previously, if I look at this example right here, this was created by using the very same pattern that I created on the other side. So I'm just going to copy by hitting Control C or Command C on a Mac. Go to this new window and paste this in here just as an example. So what you can do when you actually go in here and start making your changes is I just set a color palette for myself. And this is just kind of a way of thinking. When I'm doing patterns like this, I usually use three colors, but you can use as many colors as you want. And on this one, I kept it all grayscale, but you can make it colored if you want to. You might want to check out some websites like color.adobe.com or colorlovers.com. I'll link both those in the description for some color palette ideas for you to go ahead and use. But all you have to do is select a triangle that you want to change the color of, and then go to the fill, double click that, change it to be a different color. And as you can see, it's really easy to do that. So just select whichever triangle you want to make a different color. Go ahead, double click on the fill, select a color, and then change it to be whatever it is you want it to be. And once I get going, I usually use the selection tool and then the eyedropper tool very quickly to make my colors populate across everything. So to select this black one, I just want to make sure I hit V so my selection tool is selected, click it, hit I to bring up the eyedropper, and then go to one of these triangles I want to pull the color from, and then click it, and then it goes ahead and changes that color. So I just keep hitting V and then I and then clicking, and I keep doing this to create different patterns throughout this entire thing. So it's a pretty fast way to go in here and make different patterns. I'm actually going to make this one a slightly darker color to make this a true three color pattern instead of just a two color pattern. But as you can see by hitting V and I and quickly rotating through these triangles, you can very quickly make your custom pattern look exactly how you want. And then I could do the same, of course, on the bottom. And if I want this to alternate a little bit, I can just select a different start point for my colors until I get to my pattern looking the way that I think I want it to look. And the way I did the one on the left hand side right here is I just kind of set a rule for myself where I didn't want the same color to touch itself in two different places, at least not fully. Some of these points will touch each other, but you can kind of make little rules like that, like try to use only three colors and then make different shapes that don't fully connect or touch each other to make a somewhat more randomized pattern that still has a structure for you to think about when you're actually making something. I made this pretty quick as a kind of proof of concept concept for this tutorial, but you can feel free to do it however you want. So in terms of making a simple triangular pattern, you can do it this way. Or if you want to make one a bit more like mine on the left hand side here, just start hitting V and then I and kind of making little trails for your pattern to go on using similar color blocks. As you can see, it's pretty quick to go in here and just start making various patterns once you get going. As you can see, I can just keep on building like this until I feel like I have a pretty good baseline of a pattern to work from. But I'm not going to fully make this pattern here because it takes a little bit of time to go in here and kind of make something a bit more cohesive. So I'm going to show you how to make this into an actual repeat so stuff isn't going off the edges. So what we're going to want to do is hover over where now it shows the polygon tool because that's where we selected it. But you can just hit M on your keyboard to bring up the rectangle tool or click and hold over the polygon and select the rectangle tool manually. And then in the upper left hand corner here, we want to select the intersection point and our smart guides will tell us when we're there. And then click and hold and drag it to the lower right hand corner here until it says anchor or intersect. And it's right now saying intersect on the both the vertical as well as horizontal planes here and then let go. And then once we are ready to apply this clipping mask, you want to highlight over everything, all the triangles and this big box we just drew, and then right click and then make clipping mask. So now if I were to go ahead and just hold alt on a PC or option on a Mac to duplicate this to the side here. And once again, I'm going to grab the edge, hold alt on a PC, option on a Mac, hold shift so it stays on this perfect horizontal plane until it intersects the edge of the pattern on this other side here and then let go. 
So as you can see, it does seem to repeat perfectly, and the same will apply if I do it on the, whoops, if I go ahead and do it on the horizontal plane right here, just like this. So this is, although this looks a bit crazy because it's not a complete pattern, you can tell that it does seamlessly repeat. One thing to keep note of is basically whatever you have on the left-hand side here will repeat on the left-hand side of the secondary box you got here. So you might want to think about, since this pattern right here ends in this kind of a middle gray color, you can go ahead and make these a bit more cohesive. So instead of having this be the darker gray version right here, you can hit the A button on your keyboard or select the white arrow for the direct selection tool. Click on this one right here, which is this darker color, and then I'm going to hit I and just make sure I select the color of the one on the furthest left right here and change that. So now if I were to delete this secondary repeat very quickly right here, and then once again, just I'll delete these ones on the bottom as well, select this thing, go over to the left hand side until it says path, hold alt on a PC or option a Mac, hold shift, drag it over till it intersects, and you can tell that part right here on this corner now perfectly repeats as well. And if it doesn't bother you that there's some irregularities in the seamless repeat, you don't have to do that step. And it doesn't have to be, for example, a perfect mirror image as well, because when you're creating a pattern that's much more randomized, like this one right here, there's gonna be some irregular points that might not look perfect, but because it's a fairly complex pattern, that really shouldn't make a big deal. But that's about it for this. Remember to experiment around with different color combinations and different ways of creating your patterns. You can do it using very simple just triangle on triangles like this one right here, or extending the triangles to create more complex and random geometric patterns like this one on the left. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you found this helpful, please like and favorite. And if you want to see stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming out for illustrators and designers. Thanks so much for watching.